This begins a series of videos on the vertical column. And I'd like to begin by first talking about the basic structure of the vertebra. I think that the two most basic components of the vertebra that you need to understand and understand the function of are the body, which is also referred to as the centrum, and the vertebral arch, which is also referred to as the neural arch. So let's consider each of these in turn, starting with the body. If you look at a vertebra from this angle, and this would be a lumbar vertebra, notice that what we call the body or the centrum is essentially a cylindrical structure. And what can we compare it to? This image might be familiar to you. This is the Parthenon in Athens, Greece. And notice one of the most important structural elements of the building, the column. Now, if we take a close look at the column, you'll see that it is essentially made by placing one cylindrical block over another. And as you put one on top of another, you have a column. So the anatomist compared the vertebral column to this architectural structure. Now, the columns in this building are essentially supportive. They're holding the roof up. And as such, they have strength. They have compressional strength. However, if there were a severe earthquake, these columns probably wouldn't hold up very well because all the various forces acting upon the column would tend to cause them to crack and break up. Now, why do I bring this up? Well, the bodies of your vertebra are essentially a supportive element of the vertebra that enables the vertebral column to be of supportive structure. However, although it needs solidity and it has to resist forces, at the same time movement is necessary. So we have to construct our column, our vertebral column, so that it can move in response to various forces. Now if we take a close look at the vertebral column, and this figure does that, we can see the basic element that does this and it's the intervertebral disc. So here you can see intervertebral discs in between the stacked bodies of the vertebra. And these intervertebral discs are going to permit some degree of movement between the bodies, while at the same time maintaining the strength of the column. And you'll find in these discs fibrocartilage, which is a type of material that resists tearing but also gives you some degree of resilience. And that's exactly what we need for this element, for these intervertebral discs. Now, what kinds of forces are these intervertebral discs going to resist? You can flex and twist your vertebral column. And this is important to achieve the various kinds of movements that we are capable of. We can break down the various movements into lateral flexion, in other words, bending your spine from side to side. We can twist the spine, which is also referred to as torsion. One other movement that is common is flexion and extension and hyperextension. So you can curve your back, and that would be flexion. You could also straighten your back, that would be extension. And if you arch your back, that would be hyperextension. And this pair of figures illustrates flexion and hyperextension. On the left, we have flexion. And on the right, we have hyperextension. If you look closely at the intervertebral discs between the bodies on each side, you'll see how the intervertebral discs allow for the movement of each of the bodies in relationship to one another that enables us to achieve movement in both flexion and hyperextension. Notice that the degree of movement that is achieved between these two vertebra does not seem very great. However, when you add up the movement that occurs at each intervertebral disc along the length of the column, the effects add up that enables the wide degree of movement that the vertebral column is capable of. The nature of these intervertebral discs, how they're designed, will be discussed at greater length in other videos. Now let's turn to the other important element of the vertebra, 
which is our vertebral arch or neural arch. You can divide the arch into two main components. First we have the parts that form the walls of the arch. And these walls are basically at the foot of the arch. And we refer to the wall as the pedicle. And if we pluralize that word, we have pedicles. Now, the word pedicle essentially means little foot. In English, you put your foot on a pedal when you ride a bike. Uh, if you are walking, you are a pedestrian. So you can see th that this word has its root in a word that means foot. The other main element of the arch is the roof. And the roof is composed of a layer, a lamina. So what you essentially have is a layer of bone on the top, a lamina, and you would pluralize this word in the Latin way by referring to laminae. So the pedicles and the laminae are going to form our arch. But then why is this an important component of the vertebra? Well, the arch forms a passageway, an opening, which is referred to as the vertebral foramen. Now, this opening allows an important element of the central nervous system to go through it, which is the spinal cord. Spinal cord is nervous tissue. It's very delicate. It needs to be protected. So it is protected in this bony encasement, which is formed by the vertebral arch. However, it's not just one vertebral arch that forms this bony encasement. It's the series of arches through which the spinal cord passes. Here again is the, our lumbar vertebra, and you can see how the vertebral arch allows for the passage of the spinal cord. As you go through a series of arches, you're going through what could be referred to as an arcade, an arcade of arches. And this shows an architectural arcade. Here you have a series of arches which form a passageway. So we create a passageway by putting one arch after another in, in the series. Here is a nice figure of three thoracic vertebrae in which you can see the spinal cord. The spinal cord is passing through our vertebral foramina. And as they pass through the vertebral foramina, which are now forming our arcade, we are going to refer to this passageway as the spinal canal. And notice also in this figure that you can see on the sides of the body spinal nerves which are exiting from the spinal canal. So between our vertebra, we're going to have passageways that allow the spinal nerves to exit and enter. So if you look at the vertebral column from this point of view, which is a lateral view, we can see in between the arches we have openings. And these openings are between the vertebra. So we're going to refer to these openings as intervertebral foramina. And the intervertebral foramina, again, are going to allow for the entrance and exit of our spinal nerves. This brings our video to an end. If you'd like to take a quiz, there is a link to a quiz in the description below. Here are the image attributions. And here is my assistant, Apollo, taking time off at the water cooler.